All right. All right. Thank you, Henry. Well, good afternoon, everybody. The time is 432 and I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, my, my name is Mara Carlson Van Dort. I'm the chair of the Alaska Board of Fisheries. Um, it is Wednesday, April 19th. The time is 432 PM. And um, today we have five of seven board members present. Um, however, before proceeding any further, I'd like everybody to take a chance to introduce themselves. I'll begin with board members, um, kind of on the order that you're on the screen there, and then we'll go, uh, I'll do my best to, to remember the order in which we sit around the table and I'll call on you and then you can go ahead and introduce um, ADF and G staff that are here and then um, uh, I'll proceed from there. All right, so uh, Mr. Carpenter, welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Tom Carpenter from Cordova. Mr. Zeray. Um, th yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Stan Zeray from the village of Tanda. Thank you, Madam Chair. And good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mackenzie Mitchell Fairbanks. And John Wood from Willow, though the screen is not popping up for some reason. See you and hear you loud and clear, John. Okay. And um, and again, my name is Mara Carlson Van Dort. Uh, joining everybody today from Anchorage, um, Mr. Commissioner, would you please uh, introduce any staff that you have joining us today? Um, this is Doug Vincent Lang, Commissioner of Alaska Department of Fish and Game, and I can't see how to see what my staff <laughs> is on here, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Let's start with the uh, Commercial Fisheries Division. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Sam Raybung. I'm the Director of Division of Commercial Fisheries. And with us today is uh, John Linderman, the AYK Regional Supervisor, Chuck Brazil, uh, AYK Management Coordinator. And we have one more, who's with, oh, Nick Smith, sorry, the Area Management Biologist for Kuskokwim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Director Raybung, um, Division of Sport Fish, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, board members. Uh, Tom Talby, Acting Director of Division of Sportfish. I'll be the only sportfish person here today. Uh, welcome, Tom. Thank you. Uh, subsistence Division. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Lisa Olson with Division of Subsistence. Also joining us today is Alita Trainer. She's the Northern Region Program Manager. Thank you. And I'm trying to remember, um, I also see that we have uh, Deputy Commissioner Ben Mulligan with us this afternoon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, Ben Mulligan, um, Deputy Commissioner of Alaska Department of Fishing Game. Hi, welcome, Ben. And Thank you. going around the table, uh, Division, uh, sorry, Department of Law. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Aaron Peterson with the Department of Law. Hi, Aaron. And um, Department of Public Safety. Good morning, Madam Chair. Aaron Frenzel, Alaska Wildlife Troopers. Welcome. Good to see you all. And um, board support, Director Nelson. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. My name is Art Nelson. I'm Executive Director for the Board of Fisheries, and I am doing this meeting from Bethel this evening. Uh, also with board support staff, we've got um, Henry Lesia, our uh, public, uh, publications guy. He's uh, doing sound. Kyle Campbell, our Interior Region Coordinator, is uh, <clears throat> running the Zoom, and he's our main Zoom bouncer this afternoon. Uh, Faree Fernandez is um doing the uh the rcs and savannah hollingworth also out here um is uh, uh putting the sound out to the dial in listen only line thank you thank you director nelson and from the office of subsistence management do we have mr pappas on the line today good afternoon uh, madam chair george pappas osm audio only uh it's great to be here thank you thank you for joining us today is there anybody that i've missed all right, very good. Thank you uh, all for joining us, making time this afternoon for this uh, special meeting. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, the board staff published a notice in the Alaska Online Public Notice System, posted the notice on its main website, the meeting website, and its designated hosting place, and also distributed it to its uh, a usual list of email recipients. I'm not going to read it, but copies um, are available uh, from the executive director for those who are interested in the complete text. Um, I encourage you to send him an email. 
um, or reach out uh, through the board's website uh, and request that if you would like it. Public notice and proposal was distributed, proposal, singular, <laughs> was distributed to the uh, local fish and game advisory committees. It's posted online. They were also sent via email to the interested parties and organizations. Public comments were solicited for this proposal and board members have received a copy of all the on-time written public comments. Uh, copies of all these materials are updated frequently throughout this meeting um, and also can be um, accessed on the board's website on the web page specific to this meeting, which I believe is right at the top of the, um, of the Board of Fisheries website. The tentative agenda from this, for this meeting is also posted there. Um, the agenda is subject to change, but it's pretty short today, so I don't I don't plan on a lot of that, but um, we'll we'll stay on the agenda as closely as possible. The board will not be taking any public testimony during this meeting, so I encourage the public who is online and listening to submit written comments on the proposal under consideration. If there is any additional information you feel the board should consider in addition to the public comments that the board has already received, um, please make sure that your written comments clearly include your name, the organization that you represent. Um, since this meeting is likely to be relatively short, I would encourage anyone interested in submitting written comments to do so as soon as possible. Um, we may take a short break during the meeting to allow board members an opportunity to review any additional written comments um, or RCs that come through that may be received. And um, I would encourage board members and members of the public to pull up that meeting webpage and, um, and refresh it frequently to see if any RCs have been posted. Um, unlike our normal meetings where we have regular distributions, um, board support staff will be uploading any RCs that come in as soon as they're received. And so just keep checking, checking on that. And uh, I'll, I'll try and keep an eye on it. I know Director Nelson will be monitoring that also and let us know. And um, if, if any board members would like to take a short break to review any RCs that may come through, um, I'm happy to accommodate that. So if, uh, if there are written comments that come through during this meeting, they can be submitted electronically in a Word document or a PDF through that board website. A link to the submission portal is prominently featured on the meeting page of our website where all of the materials for this meeting are posted. Um, of course, written comments can also be submitted by fax to 907-465-6094. And um, you know, I'll probably just take, uh, like I said, a little bit of time to make sure that there haven't been any um, facts was submitted um, with additional RCs or written comments. And if there are, please let me know. Um, mm -hmm. Board support staff, just flag it and, and, and um, we can take some time to get it distributed. Given the short nature of this meeting, um, again, I'd urge any additional written comments to be as brief as possible. We will not accept comments more than five single-sided pages or the equivalent double-sided pages unless specific information is requested by the board that requires more pages than allowed under the standard. All documents received at this board meeting will be assigned a log number called an RC, um, and all written materials will be retained for permanent record of the board. And since this is a full-blown regular board meeting, we're going to go ahead and do our ethics disclosures. And um, I'm going to be taking ethics disclosures in the same order that we did introductions. And so I will begin at this time. Uh, well, before we start ethics disclosures, are there any questions from uh, members of the board or staff about how we're going to proceed today. Okay. No questions, Madam Chair, but I, I do have something I'd like to put on the record, if, if I might. Mr. Carpenter. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> For the purpose of this meeting, <clears throat> understanding that it, there's a clear direction that the, our vice chair is absent and the chair must make an ethics disclosure, I would, I would move that uh, member would be considered vice chairman. I'll second that and ask unanimous consent. Thank you. Sorry. Not hearing any or seeing any objection. Um, congratulations, Mr. Wood, you are vice chair for the purposes of this meeting. <laughs> thank, thank you guys. Um, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Mr. Jensen could not join us today. Um, and so just to make sure we're we're uh, procedurally correct. Um, I, I appreciate the motion. Thank you. All right. So beginning with ethics disclosures, Mr. Carpenter, will you please put yours on the record at this time? Thank you, Madam Chair. As I stated earlier, my name is Tom Carpenter. I reside in Cordova. I'm currently retired, divested myself completely of all businesses, including limited entry permits and IFQs. 
My primary income comes from investment income and personal savings managed by Merrill Lynch. My wife is employed by the Cordova School District as an educator. I receive the Alaska Permanent Fund dividend as do my wife and daughter and receive a stipend for serving on this board. Neither I nor anyone in my immediate or extended family have any financial interest in any business which is related to fish and wildlife resources or belong to any organizations which any financial gain can be attributed. Upon confirmation, I resign my position on all boards, including the Copper River Prince William Sound Advisory Committee, the Prince William Sound Aquaculture Board. There are no proposals before the board that will benefit myself nor any immediate or extended family. Uh, no member of my family or extended family is involved with any lawsuits against the state or the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. And I believe this statement to be true, correct, and complete. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Carpenter? Seeing none, Mr. Carpenter, you can fully participate um, on the proposal before us today. Mr. Zaray. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> uh, my name is Stan Zaray, and I live in the village of Tanana on the Yukon River. I was born in Boston, Massachusetts, and moved to Alaska in 1973, married with four children, three of whom reside in Alaska. I've made most of my living over the years as a contract fisherman for research projects for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and managing, managing my own research grants for the Office of Subsistence Management and the Yukon River Panel. Less of its significant in income came from my trapping, commercial fishing, Alaska reality TV contracts, mechanic and equipment work for the uh, in TAN now. Um, almost all of the above has ended in the last two years. Presently, my income is derived from mechanic equipment work with the Tanna Tribal Council and City of Tanna, uh, and as a contractor for six weeks in the summer for an ichthyophonous disease project for the U for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I and no member of my family are involved in a lawsuit with the state of Alaska. I'm currently not on any boards or org organizations associated with fisheries issues. I, re I receive a stipend for service from this board and also my Alaska PDF dividend. I have a permanent Alaska hunting, fishing, and trapping license being 73 years old. Uh, I currently hold a CFEC Yukon River fish wheel permit, and my son has a commercial set gillnet permit. I see no personal and economic potential conflicts with any of the proposals currently before the Board of Fisheries and I believe any personal or financial interests I or any fam family member may have in the proposals before us are insignificant. I hereby state that the above is true, correct, and complete to the best of my knowledge. Thank you. Thanks, Stan. Are there any um, questions from the board? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Zray, you may fully participate in the matter before us today. Ms. Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Mackenzie Mitchell and I have resided in Alaska since 2010. My immediate family consists of my mother and two brothers, all of whom reside outside of Alaska. In addition, I do not have any relatives that are from Alaska, reside in Alaska, or are involved in Alaska's fisheries. I will receive a stipend for service on the board, and I do receive the permanent fund dividend as a resident of Alaska. I annually purchase a resident sport fish, hunt, and trap license for personal hunting and fishing recreation in the state. I teach economics and recreation management courses at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and I'm currently taking an aviation maintenance technician course. In addition to my work with the university, I work seasonally for hunting and fishing outfitters across the state, serving roles as sport fishing guide and hunting guide under a registered guide outfitter license, sport fishing guide license, and merchant mariner credential. In 2020 and 2021, I guided fishing charters in Prince William Sound and the Gulf of Alaska while basing out of the Port of Valdez. In years prior to 2020, I guided fishing charters in the Gulf of Alaska, basing out of the Kodiak Islands. I did not guide any sport fish charters in 2022. I occasionally work providing flight instruction and in the restaurant industry. I hold two business licenses in the state of Alaska, one for an air taxi service and one for a hunting and fishing outfitter company. Only the hunting side of the outfitting company is operational at this time, but it is my intent to at some point operate a sport fishing company in the South Central sport fish area. Neither I nor any member of my immediate family are members of any organization or corporation that is involved in a lawsuit against the state, the board, or the Department of Fish and Game, or where the state, the board, or the department is a party to the lawsuit. 
I do not believe that I have any conflicts with the matters before us, and I certify that to the best of my knowledge, this statement is true, correct, and complete. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. Any questions from the board? Seeing none, I rule that you can fully participate on the matter before us today. Thank you. Mr. Wood. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> in compliance with AS 3952, I'm John Wood, residing in Willow, Alaska. I receive a pension from the state of Alaska after serving in the Alaska court system, the Anchorage Municipal Assembly, and as staff to the Alaska State Legislature. I also receive Social Security benefits and the Alaska Permanent Fund dividend, as does my wife. I am also on contract with the state of Alaska on an hourly as needed basis, unrelated to any issues before this board. I fish recreational, recreationally and have a permanent hunting fishing license, which is one of the few advantages of reaching 76 years of age. I will receive a stipend for service on this board of fisheries. My wife, Mary, is now retired. She is administrator of a trust composed of assets, none of which are related to any fish business. There are no interests of a personal or financial nature that I nor any member of my immediate family has that may be affected by any of the proposals to be con uh, considered by this board at this meeting or which may constitute a conflict of interest under the Alaska Executive Branch Act. Neither I nor any member of my immediate family or members of any organization or corporation that is involved in a lawsuit against the state, the board, or the Department of Fish and Game or where the state, the board, or the department is a party to the lawsuit. I certify the best of my knowledge that this statement is true, correct, and complete. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Are there any questions from Member Wood? Seeing none, I rule that you may also fully participate in the matter before us today. And with that, I will turn it over to you, John, um, and I will put my ethics disclosure on the record. Thank you, Madam Chair. Proceed. All right, so my name is Mara Carlson Van Dort. I was born and raised in Alaska. I currently reside in Anchorage. I am currently employed as the president and CEO of Far West Incorporated, the Native Village Corporation for the village of Chignik Bay, formed under the Alaska Native Claim Settlement Act. I am a shareholder in Cognac and in the Bristol Bay Native Corporation. My significant other is a heavy equipment operator and member of the International Brotherhood of Operating Engineers number 302. We both purchased resident sport fish licenses. Both he and I receive uh, state of Alaska permanent fund dividends, and I also receive a stipend for my service on this board. Neither I, my significant other, members of my immediate family, nor my employer have any financial interest in fisheries. Similarly, neither I, my significant other, members of my immediate family, nor my employer are involved with any lawsuits with the state of Alaska, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, or the Board of Fisheries. And Mr. Chairman, this information is true, correct, and complete to the best of my knowledge. Thank you. Any questions? from board members. Seeing here none, I rule that you have no conflict and may participate fully in the matters before us. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Um, that concludes ethics statements and um, we weren't really prepared to have any full-blown staff reports. Um, we did re receive the full complement of, of, um, of reports on the AYK fisheries during the AYK meeting, um, and, but I did ask uh, staff to just prepare maybe a little refresher or give us a couple of high points with respect to the Cuscoquim Bay fishery, um, particularly just to kind of help refresh our memories a little bit before we get into uh, deliberations of the proposal. So I just want to thank staff for um, being able to hopefully guide us through that with a little bit of, you know, not a, not a ton of notice, but um, uh, I, th I thought it would be helpful. So with that, um, Nick, I don't know if you'll, you'll be presenting today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, this is Nick Smith with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. I can give a brief update um, to the board. So give me one second to share my screen here. Thank you. Everybody see it okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Madam Chair and members of the board, my name is Nick Smith and I'm the Cusquam Area Subsistence and Commercial Fisheries Manager. I will be providing a brief overview of Cusquam Bay Subsistence and Commercial Fisheries with an emphasis on the years since the last board cycle. The next series of slides will provide an overview of Cusquam Bay Fisheries with District 4 shown in the rectangle and District 5 shown in the oval. The main drainages that make up Cusquam Bay are the Connectock and Good News Rivers. 
The rivers within Cusquam Bay have experienced the same poor king salmon returns as the rest of the Cusquam area. Sockeye salmon have had some of the highest runs and escapements on record. Due to the lack of funding, we have not been able to assess chum or coho returning to this area since the last board meeting. However, local fishers and catch statistics have indicated that the chum and coho runs have been poor in recent years. The Cusquam Bay area salmon ANS has been met or exceeded annually. In 2020 and 2021, a single large scale processor operated in commercial fishing districts four and five. Due to the poor king salmon returns, the department has continued to implement restrictions to the subsistence fishery in district four. These restrictions include closing subsistence fishing one day a week and restricting gillnet mesh size to six inch or less. During the commercial fishing season, subsistence fishing was closed before, during, and after each commercial period. Commercial fishing in districts four and five is managed according to the district four and five salmon management plan and targets salmon bound for the Connectuck and Good News Rivers. The commercial fishing season was delayed until late June in 2020 and early July 2021 to allow for king salmon escapement in order to achieve escaping goals in light of continued low returns. An additional action taken was closing marine waters around the mouth of the Connectuck River in District 4 during the first few commercial fishing periods to reduce the harvest of king salmon. Commercial periods in both fishing districts were announced by emergency order and were based on commercial catch statistics and aerial surveys. The department does not anticipate any commercial gillnet openings in Cusquam Bay fishing districts four and five in 2023. This graph depicts commercial salmon harvest in district four from 2008 to 2022. The bottom axis is year and the left axis is number of fish harvested. The colored lines correspond to each salmon species and the number above all lines in each year is how many permits made at least one delivery. There were no commercial fisheries in District 4 from 2016 to 2019 and 2022. Record low participation, above average sockeye and weak chum salmon runs, and utilizing a conservative approach to the District 4 fishery to protect king salmon can account for fishery performance in 2020 and 2021. The 2020 and 2021 seasons saw the fewest permits fished in District 4 on record. With the exception of sockeye salmon, commercial harvest for all species in District 4 were well below average in 2020 and 2021. This table shows aerial survey estimates for king and sockeye salmon on the Connectuck River between 2004 and 2022. The numbers highlighted in red indicate years that established escaping goals shown at the bottom of the table were not achieved. Where there is no data, either the survey did not meet acceptable criteria or was not flown due to either weather or time constraints. Madam Chair, this concludes my presentation and I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Questions from any members of the board, Mr. Wood. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, question to staff. The, the years that you've uh, indicated no commercial fisheries, was that because there was just none interested in going to that fishery? Or is that something because of the department action that there, there was no commercial fishing taking place? Uh, through the chair, this is Nick Smith with the Department of Fishing Game. Uh, to answer your question, Mr. Wood, there was uh, no uh, buyers or processors um, in the area in those years. Okay, so it had nothing to do with any kind of emergency audit or anything else coming out of the department then? That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, if I can ask staff, and I don't think they're going to have an answer, but this format we're using, uh, it's the only person here with a possibility, and that is in PC2, which was submitted uh, by the village of, how do you pronounce that, Quinnahawk? Anyway, if I'm mispronouncing, I apologize, but they made mention in the second page that uh, for years, the subsistence fisheries uh, fishermen have uh, undergone some reduction on their own in an effort to protect and, and help rebuild the Chinook and, and Shum Sox. Do you know what that effort entailed? Uh, through the wood, uh, Mr. Woods, 
So we've been, um, and we'll get to it when we get to our staff comments, but uh, we've had discussions with the native village of Quinnahawk um, annually for a number of years now. And part of the restrictions that we've taken of closing one day a week and restricting it to six inch or less mesh gill nets has been in consultation with the native village of Quinnahawk. And then last question, Madam Chairman, on slide four, if you could put that back in front of us. I hope I had the right number. Where you say subsistence closed during commercial periods. Uh -huh. uh, is that something that the department requires or regulations require? Out through the chair, Mr. Woods. So that was a um, mandated regulation at the time that those fishing periods were prosecuted. Um, if you remember from our AYK meeting, um, the board passed a proposal to eliminate the directed closures around and with surrounding commercial fishing periods. Okay, but while it was still in force, that was the reason for closing subsistence? That is correct. Okay. I have no other questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wood. You answered one of my questions, or you asked one of my questions too. So um, I, it was to that same, that last point as well. Thank you. Um, other board questions? Mm -hmm. Can't see very good um, on the side. Not seeing any. Um, if you could go, uh, so with, with respect, I think, Nick, I think you said to, um, those two, the, the beginning in the map that you had, there was two areas, um, and then the escapement goals that you showed were just for the connect talk river, I believe. Is that correct? Is that the, is that the only river or the only escapement goals that we're concerned with at this point with this proposal? Ma'am chair. Sure, yes. So the proposal at hand, um, is identifying district four mm -hmm. and the, the river that that would drain into is the connect talk river. And there's currently two escaping goals, aerial based for one for Saka and one for Chinook salmon. Very good. Thank you. I just wanted to make that clear. Any other board questions? All right. Are we getting it? Have we received any RCs? This thing doesn't look like it. All right, um, I'll keep checking on the RCs, but let's go ahead if there's no other questions. Um, in this space, Mr. Pappas, I believe you wanted to open uh, or give us a quick update on, on the Federal Subsistence Board actions. Madam Chair, if I may interject, oh, okay. Mr. Pappas um, contacted me. He was still having further issues um, with um, technology regarding this. Um, so he asked me to pass along what um, Federal Subsistence Board just passed. Um, so here just earlier this afternoon, the Federal Assistance Board considered um, the Special Action FSA 2301, which proposed to close um, the portion of the Connecticut River within um, the boundary of the refuge to Chinook and Chum Salmon for non-federally qualified users for um, the month of June for this, season, for this year and next year. Ultimately, the board decided to only um, take action for chum salmon um, for those um, for those periods of time. Um, and if you would like, I can give a kind of a synopsis on what I heard the board deliberate on, but I will leave that up to you guys to decide. Why don't you go ahead and roll with it? Let us know what okay. the issue was that they took. Um, so primarily, um, the reason they took Chinook off the table is you saw the numbers that um, that Nick Smith um, put up that we are still making the aerial survey goals for that and we had the data to show it. So um, OSM recommended to pull away that portion of the closure, um, but given they felt that um, since they didn't have the same um, sort of data showing either way for chum salmon, um, they decided to stay with that portion um, of the request and close um, directed um, chum harvest for non-federally qualified users during that time. 
Thanks, Ben. And just so that I'm so the closure was just for non federally qualified, they federally qualified users still have the opportunity to harvest for subsistence on Chum. So it, so it's only now for at least for targeted Chum, it's only federally qualified users. So non federally qualified users can't come in and plus some um, between the sport fish closure. Um, it pretty much takes everybody off the table for um, for targeted chum, but they can still non federally qualified users can still come in for the other species. So still come in for Chinook um, and um, coho and sockeye and pink if necessary. Okay, and then I don't know if this question is for you or perhaps Nick, but um, in terms of um, assessing escapement goals for chum and the Connecticut River, is that purely aerial survey or is there some weirs or how is that? How is that done? I'd leave that up to Nick. Okay, Nick. Yeah, Thanks, Ben. Definitely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nick Smith with the department. Um, currently, there are no escape goals for chum salmon on the Connect Talk River. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Mr. Wood. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm a person who learns a lot by reading, much more so than listening. So bear with me, if you would. Question to either Nick or, or to Ben. Uh, if I understand the order that you're referencing, then we still have a group of subsistence fishermen who may or may not travel down to this area and fish with multiple nets. Uh, is that correct? This only has to do with the um in river portion and i believe you can't fish multiply nets in river but nick can always correct me nick, through the chair this is uh, nick smith with the department uh board member wood um so a i guess the short answer is yes somebody or a group of individuals could go down and operate multiple nets in this area the federal closure only applies to the connect talk river proper um, what this proposal 173 is looking at is out in District 4, which is the saltwater out in front of the village of Quinnahawk. Um, and as it stands right now, a net can be operated by an individual. So this would still be the case that people could go down, travel there, and operate multiple nets out of the same boat. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. We'll go ahead and move into, I'm going to check the RCs one more time, move into deliberations. And I also have noticed that I was remiss at the beginning of this meeting in stating this explicit purpose. And the purpose of this special meeting was for the consideration of proposal 173, which was an on time submitted proposal, which failed to make it into the proposal book. And so we did not deliberate it um, during the AYK meeting. And so um, in order to honor the fact that um, this was an on-time proposal, that was the entire purpose of, of this meeting and um, uh, specifically for the consideration of Proposal 173. I know that it was stated on the record, I think under miscellaneous business um, at our statewide meeting, but I probably should state that here now too. So um, I don't see any additional RCs. So with that, let's go ahead and move into deliberations of Proposal number 173. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adopt proposal number 173, please. Move to adopt 173. Second. Um, staff comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nick Smith with the department. Proposal 173 5AC 01270, lawful gear and gear specifications and operation and 5AAC 07331 gillnet specifications and operations. This proposal would close Cusco Area District 4 subsistence and commercial salmon fisheries on Sundays and allow only one gillnet to be operated per vessel in the subsistence and commercial salmon fisheries between June 1 and July 15. Currently in the subsistence fishery, salmon may be taken by gillnet, beach seine, a hook and line attached to a rod or pole, hand line, dip net, or fish wheel unless closed by emergency order. Salmon may also be taken by spear in the Connect Talk and Aralic River drainages. The aggregate length of set gill nets 
or drift gill nets in use by an individual for taking salmon may not exceed 50 fathoms. The maximum depth of gill nets with six inch or smaller mesh may not be more than 45 meshes in depth and gill nets with greater than six inch mesh may not be more than 35 meshes in depth. In the commercial fishery, salmon may be taken only with set gill nets and drift gill nets. A person may not operate or assist in operating more than one type of gear at any time. A gill net must have a mesh size of six inch or less and may not be more than 45 meshes in depth. The aggregate length of a set gill net or drift gill net may not exceed 50 fathoms, except that if the commissioner determines that there is a harvestable surplus of salmon, the commissioner may by emergency order close the fishing season and immediately reopen a season during which the aggregate length of a set gill net or drift gill net may not exceed 100 fathoms. If adopted, Cusquam Area District 4 subsistence and commercial fishers, fisheries would be closed on Sundays and only one gill net could be operated per vessel in the subsistence and commercial fishery between June 1 and July 15. Harvest of king, sockeye, and chum salmon and subsistence opportunity may decrease by an unknown amount. For background, in recent years, Quinnahawk residents have expressed in meetings and conversations with the department there, that there has been a dramatic increase in subsistence fishing effort from Kuskokwim River residents subsistence fishing in District 4. They relate that this increase in effort is not only from increased numbers of vessels traveling to District 4, but multiple individuals deploying several gill nets from a single boat. Increased fishing pressure is due to subsistence fishing restrictions that have been implemented annually on the Kuskokwim River to conserve king and chum salmon. The native village of Quinnahawk has proposed this solution to provide subsistence opportunity based on their local fishing preferences to maintain fishing time and allow only one net per boat. In consultation with the native village of Quinnahawk and VK, the department has generally implemented these changes since 2019. Department comments. The department is neutral on the provisions of subsistence opportunity as well as the allocative aspects of this proposal. The department supports regulatory changes that during, during periods of low productivity may help to ensure adequate escapement and possibly increase future yields of king and chum salmon. Although closing the fishery for one day and limiting boats to one net does represent a reduction in subsistence opportunities, these changes reflect local fishing preferences. Further, subsistence fishermen would benefit since these changes would reduce the probability of having to take an in-season management action using emergency order authority by reducing fishing effort to one net per boat. This proposal would create a more orderly fishery and also align subsistence and commercial fishing regulations in District 4. The department is, is supportive of additional management tools that provide for increased conservation while attempting to minimize impacts to social and cultural fishing practices of Quinnahawk Village residents who traditionally fish in District 4. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Nick. Um, board discussion. I, uh, yeah, Mr. Carpenter, then Mr. Wood, and then I have a couple of questions too. Mr. Carpenter. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Nick, just a quick clarification. So the current regulations um, as stated in the department's comments for the subsistence fishery um, state that salmon may be taken with a gill net, beach seine, hook and line, hand line, dip net, or fish wheel. Um, is the way that this proposal is written, is it going to make that, make it more difficult for people to utilize these current regulatory ways of harvesting fish, or is it specifically addressing the issue of a gill net from a boat? Through the chair, Mr. Carpenter, um, this proposal as written will only be addressing gill nets. Um, I don't see an impact to all of the other forms of legal subsistence gear. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wood. Uh, I have two questions. One, I couldn't help but notice the absence of any AC comment. Am I to assume that there's no AC in this particular area and that the regional uh, federal uh, subsistence committee is the one that did uh, uh, respond that that'd be the only one we were going to receive on this. Guess that's to all staff. Is there an AC in the area? 
through the chair, Ms. Member Woods. Um, there is an AC in the area. Um, they did not meet prior to this board meeting. Um, I didn't know if uh, Director Nelson wanted to expand on that at all, but um, yeah, there is an AC for this area, but they did not meet prior to this meeting. Yeah, Art, would you, if you have anything further to add? No, uh, what uh, Mr. Smith said is correct. They just did not have an opportunity to meet prior to this meeting. So we don't have a position from the local AC. Okay, thank you. And then back to Nick. Nick, we have a situation which I really am, am not happy to see in that we now have subsistence versus subsistence and competition for the, the fishery resource. And it's a sad day when that uh, takes place. But nonetheless, we have a group of uh, subsistence fishermen who apparently are traveling by boat and fishing in a different style than the local fishermen are. Um, by doing what uh, Proposal 173 is asking us to do, does it just make it basically not feasible for those people to make that trip uh, to fish in those waters? To the chair, uh, Member Woods, uh, it doesn't make it not feasible. It definitely adds um, more effort involved in going down there and, and fishing. So it may be uh, disadvantageous for people to go down from the river and fish in that area, but it still is a possible method for people to go down there. Give me an idea of the distance that they're traveling. So depending on if, if I'll use Bethel as a reference, that's a, a general location where a high population is. You're looking at a, yeah, probably 100, 125 mile one way boat ride. Um, so probably, I don't know if I was, if I was putting a time on it, it'd probably take me eight hours to get down there. So significant investment. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Madam Chair, I am was on the fence walking into this meeting and I'm still on the fence. Uh, and I'm going to wait to hear other comments from other board members, but I have some real uh, problems dealing with uh, this particular situation, even though I have always favored local choice as to how they manage their own fisheries. And, and I'll wait to hear what others have to allow. I have a, I have a couple of questions for you, Nick. Um, so, you know, sort of building off of member Carpenter's question. So this only affects the use of the gill nets, whether that be from a boat or from a beach, um, if I understand that. And in the current regulations per staff comments, it says that the aggregate length of a set gill net or drift gill net may not exceed 50 fathoms. Um, so do those restrictions apply to those, those uh, I'm assuming those, those lengths are uh, applied to the subsistence fishery as well, is that correct? Ma'am Chair, in the subsistence fishery in the entirety of the Cuscom area, the aggregate length of gill nets, whether being set or drift, used by any individual um, for the taking of salmon may not exceed 50 fathoms. Okay, and what's, what's, is that the length? I'm assuming that's the length of a typical gill net since that's what the regs state, right? That's correct. Okay, and if there's, and, and are they targeting chums specifically? Are, are they tar targeting kings? Um, wh what are folks, what is the subsistence fishery that people will have concerns about? Um, they're targeting. They're specifically targeting kings. Kings, so, okay. Tra traveling down from the Cusquam River and then targeting kings. Okay. Um, and because, and, and they're targeting kings, but we, in the Connecticut River, uh, kings have been, have been meeting their escapement goals, correct? Recently. That, that is correct, Madam Chair. They've been meeting their escapement goal by aerial on the lower portion of the escapement goal. And are there any concerns um, in terms of the subsistence targets to us, uh, to uh, any targeting or, 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 uh, or caught, catching of chum salmon? Uh, Madam Chair, depending on what time of the year that people are traveling down to go fishing in that area, you it'll be a mixed fishery of kings, sockeye, and chum. Uh -huh. and at Using a, a net of six inch or less, you will be catching uh, really anything that's in the water that time of the year. Okay. 
Okay. Um, but we don't have an escapement goal for chums, so we don't have any real way of assessing uh, mm. ch how chums are doing in the, on the river, right? In the river? Madam Chair, we don't have any direct assessment for chum salmon in the Connectock River right now. All we have to base on is uh, what we hear from local people fishing down there the last couple of years of catch and effort data from the commercial fishery and just the general pattern of what AYK chum stocks have been doing uh, the last handful of years. And so from the department's management perspective, and I don't know this, if there's any enforcement issue associated with this either, is you mentioned in your staff comments that this would, um, the, the department's in support of this and that it would allow for a more orderly fishery. Is that just because, you know, it's easier to assess whether people are following the rules, whether they're subsistence fishing? I mean, what is the real advantage that the department sees to uh, restricting uh, the number of nets? Madam Chair, what, what I see is the biggest benefit of this is, like I said in my staff comments, that when conservation acts, actions need to be taken, um, you're looking at time and area or gear restrictions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very clear from talking with the native village of Quinnahawk that they value time over multiple gear restrictions. So that when talking there, you know, reducing it to one day closed fishing and also one net per boat you're re effectively reducing the amount of fishing time out there. So um, from my perspective, if I need to take a, a management action, I'm going to either be looking at time or gear and listening to the community down there and then wanting to reduce gear because they value the time component. Um, that's really what I see as a benefit from this proposal. I feel like I'm missing something here, though. I mean, if the Kings are meeting their escapement goal, and there was no directed commercial fishery, not because of a management restriction, but because there wasn't, you know, a market necessarily for those fish. Then I'm just wondering, what is the conservation concern that the department is trying to address here with respect to restricting the subsistence fishery? Oh, through the chair, or Madam Chair. So from the King perspective, with what we've been observing with King stocks, the last handful of years where we got decreased productivity. If the Cuscombe River continues to say shut down and we continue to get more and more pressure on the Connectox stock, there runs the risk that then we run into a situation where we are now below the escaping goal in multiple years if we don't have a, a management uh, tool to try and put more fish in the river. So this is proactive. Now, I'm sure, yeah, that's what we're trying to be. Instead of being reactory to things, we're trying to be a little proactive here. Okay, thank you. That's helping me. Ms. Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nick, I think I think you just kind of answered my question, and, and it was primarily is, uh, you know, in, in an attempt to try and uh, conserve a resource that we know King Salmon Stocks have been struggling in the shift in effort that the native village at Quinnahawks identifying where a lot of people are traveling to these areas to come and fish now because um, it seems to be one of the stocks that is still faring uh, fairly well. Um, that was essentially my question to the department is, is there a concern about the shift in effort um, kind of being concentrated on the stock when we know that King Salmon Stocks are struggling in other places? And what I and Nick, if you could just confirm, is that that kind of the stance that the department's coming from? Through the chair, uh, board member Mitchell, that is correct. Another board discussion questions. Mr. Wood. Nick, the issues, uh, concerns that were just raised by two previous speakers. Does the department not have the emergency authority to address that contingency? To the chair, uh, board member Wood, the only uh, authority we have down there right now is time and area. So we do not have the option to restrict gill nets to one net per boat. We can we have time and area to close the fishery or reduce the mesh size of the gill nets that are being used currently down there. So you could, by emergency order, close it on Sunday, whatever day of the week it is that they were requesting, but you could not address the multiple nets. Is that what I'm hearing? That is correct. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, and Mr. Zeray. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I too uh, wonder what I'm missing because it, it seems kind of, I, I, I hope it, it seems like it's kind of just refreshing to see somebody uh, be proactive about this stuff. And, uh, and, and, you know, I've, I read the comments from the uh, Fairbanks Fish and Game AC, the, and the, of course the, the proposer of the proposal, and then the Yukon uh, Cuscoon Delta uh, Subsistence Regional uh, AC, uh, all those were in favor of it. I, uh, I, I, I don't see how I could. I, and I thought this, you know, in reading stuff before the meeting, I, I, I don't see how I could not um, vote in favor of this. I guess that's all I have. So if the department can only address time and area and the board, let's say the board um, adopts this proposal, that removes any latitude um, that the department may have in terms of allowing for additional nets if stock allows for that or um, if the department's concerns are alleviated. Is that correct? Somebody from the department? Sorry, Madam Chair. Uh, this is Nick with the Department of Fish and Game. Um, this, as proposed, this would be set in regulation that it would be mm -hmm. a, a guaranteed thing to happen. Um, if runs rebounded, um, what my expectation would be is if, if all the king runs start to rebound because Cuscoquim area generally track together, because they're like systems and neighbors, that you would see a reduction in the number of people traveling down to W4 to go fishing. And like you've seen in the PCs and in our staff comments, the traditional way of fishing from people that reside in Quinnahawk is one net per boat and not fishing <clears throat> on Sundays. So I don't see that as a long-term uh, detriment to the people that fish that area traditionally. Um, in addition, we do have these board meetings every three years and they can be readdressed um, when if runs rebound. Thank you. And Nick, I don't know if this question is to you or to the subsistence division, but what is the level of subsistence effort that you are seeing that this is trying to address? So, I mean, that's a significant boat ride, um, you know, and, and cost to travel there to fish. So I'm just wondering how many people and how is that being enumerated or tracked? I mean, do you have, a, are we, are we tracking how, where people are getting these, these fish from and, um, you know, how many, how many people and how many fish are we talking about here? Madam Chair, I will turn the mic over to Alita Trainer. Thank you. Hi, Alita. Thanks. Hello, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'll attempt to answer this question. The Division of Subsistence does collect harvest data throughout the Cuscoquim River drainage as part of the postseason salmon survey effort. However, the data on um, harvest intensity or number of fishers who travel to certain locations isn't something that we gather. We do have harvest by species in each district, but it is hard to um, quantify effort in those areas. Um, through this data, we can see by community that um, fishers, particularly from Bethel, as Nick had said earlier, do travel to harvest Chinook salmon in District 4, and um, it makes up a quantifiable per quantifiable percentage of Bethel's harvest, but I can't answer exactly how many fishers exactly are traveling to District 4. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of torn on this. I mean, I, you know, I'm sitting here thinking this through and, uh, you know, if there's no, you know, if there, we're making escapement goals, um, you know, I, I don't want to arbitrarily or, like restrict um, access to, to the fish. Um, I, I also understand why people would want to be judicious about about how many fish are harvested because of you know concerns about king salmon um, throughout throughout the river system. Um, so you know I'm I, I'm struggling I'm struggling with this, um, and I know that we're still providing some opportunity, but um, 
it, if it sounds like that's a significant um, portion of the of the Bethel king salmon harvest, perhaps uh, you know those those have real implications as well. So, um, any other board discussion, Mr. Carpenter? Thank you, Madam. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I thought one of the interesting things that was brought up earlier, is specific to the ANS, is that it was was being met or exceeded. Um, we don't necessarily see that a lot um, in many places. And I guess maybe a question for the subsistence division, we're specifically speaking about district four here. Is the ANS, uh, is that ANS that was referenced earlier specific to district four? And is the, the number being exceeded because there are so many more people traveling down from places like Bethel? Through the chair to member Carpenter, the um, ANS is for districts four and five combined. And it is in the bottom of the staff comment here, it is um, 6,900 to 17,000 salmon. I don't know if we do have data on whether um, the ANS has been met because of the contributions of non local fishermen. And perhaps Alita has more local insight on that. Alita? Through the, chair, through the chair, member Carpenter, we don't have data on that. It's too fine of, um, it, it's just not something that our survey instrument is able to pick up to attribute harvest to location towards ANS. We just count total number of fish caught um, by larger areas than that. So unfortunately, I can't answer that question. Thank you. And if I, if I could just maybe make a statement, Madam Chair, while I have the floor, um, I think one of the interesting things in the department's comments is that it says that it supports the regulatory changes generally. But it also states right after that, that during periods of low productivity, um, obviously the King Salmon escapement goals, while they may not be at the midpoint or the high point, they, they, are, they are being met. Um, obviously we don't have enough information necessarily regarding chum salmon, but this will be a, a permanent change, you know, in, in regulation and you know, I guess I could see this going back and forth, depending on the state of the salmon stocks in this area. And I guess that's what the three year board process is all about. Generally, I like to support local communities that are trying to, you know, self regulate to a certain degree. But um, as many of you have said, I'm kind of torn right now, because I also don't want to eliminate opportunity from people that live in an area where they could transient to this area to provide for subsistence. And I think by doing this, that's probably what we'll be doing. So that's what I have for now. Any other board discussion? Ms. Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Chair. A question for staff. In the staff comments here, it says that uh, preliminary forecasts for chum and king salmon is is predicted to be lower. Is that low as in predicting not to meet escapement goals or or how low is low? Through the chair, this is Nick Smith with the department. So um, for king salmon, we're looking at another well below average run um, coming back to that area. And that's informed from really parent year escapements and just the general trends around the area. Um, I'd imagine that we'd be similar in the end of season when we fly the aerial survey, we're going to be at the lower end of the escapement goal. For chum salmon, you know, we don't have assessment down there, but we're making, you know, our broad assumptions based on the current trends of chum salmon across all of AYK. Um, that's informed from the Cuscoquim and the Yukon areas. Um, right now, uh, it's going to be very close if any of those areas meet escapement goals for Chum once again. So if you don't meet escapement goals on King Salmon, will you shut down the subsistence fishery? Through the chair, or Madam Chair, 
Yes, um, if we do not make escapement goals for, for King Salmon, we will be taking restrictions on the subsistence fishery. Um, this is no different than what has been going on for a long time in the Cuscoquim River. Um, we've had to take severe restrictions, not just on kings, but chums and more recently coho. And that uh, has put a tremendous burden on subsistence fishing, but uh, escapement goals are the priority. Um, and then, so just so that I'm clear, the in-river is shut down? In-river subsistence? Madam Chair, the in-river subsistence fishery has varied uh, the last number of years. For king salmon, there has been a little bit of um, harvest available. And there's been, in the lower portion of the Cuscombe River, very short directed fisheries. They almost look like commercial openers. You're looking at 12 hour fishing periods spread about once, maybe twice a week through June. Um, chum salmon um, has been more or less closed for subsistence fishing the last couple of years, trying to meet its gaming goals. Um, the only uh, shining point right now is sockeye. And that's where it makes it tricky is there's been an abundance of sockeye. So there's been trying to put sockeye on people's fish racks while conserving chum salmon. So there's been very little opportunity provided uh, with the impetus of trying to get sockeye. And then coho, uh, last year was our worst coho run on record, which the subsistence fishery was closed. Okay. And then um, just harkening back to the, the actions of the Federal Subsistence Board, um, those actions were were related to, was that to sections of the Connect Talk, is that correct? Then. Madam Chair, yeah, it's just within that portion of, I guess, the lower portion that falls within the refuges. That's where the Federal Subsistence Board has um, right. jurisdiction. Right, jurisdiction. So but they, right. okay. Um, okay, so there were restrictions, in-river restrictions taken on behalf by the Federal Subsistence Board for their jurisdiction. Um, there hasn't been any commercial, I mean, subsistence closures on king salmon in river. There have been on chum um, and coho. I just want to make sure I'm tracking this. Madam Chair, in the Cuscoquim River, yes, there's been restrictions for uh, kings, chum, and well, really all species by the time it's done because they all overlap on their run timings. And then in Cuscoquim Bay, um, out in District W4, for the last handful of years, we've been shutting it down on Sundays. Um, okay. Thank you. Other board discussion? Ms. Mitchell. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm I'm uh, fairly inclined to support this proposal. While I do see it as kind of a reduction in subsistence opportunity, um, I also identify or I also notice that this proposal is coming to us from you know local subsistence Quinnahawk users and um, kind of this precautionary measure that while stung runs are not doing so well, just kind of reduce effort by everyone and just kind of slow the the effort on these runs that seem to be struggling across this region. Um, I, I think it's uh, kind of an appropriate thing to support at this time, and I think I'll be in support of this proposal. Other board discussion? Mr. Zray? Oh, Mr. Wood. Yeah, I don't see any other hands up or further discussion. So as far as the cost analysis approval, the proposal may result in additional direct costs for a private person to participate in a fishery by requiring additional time to harvest salmon. Approval of the proposal is not expected to result in any additional costs to the department. Do you want to go through the subsistence regulation review now, Madam Chair? Or you... Yes, please. Okay. Uh, is the stock in a non subsistence area? No. Is the stock customarily and traditionally taken or used for subsistence? Yes. The board made positive customary and traditional use findings for halibut, Pacific cod, and all other fin fish in the Cusacum area, and specific findings for king, chum, sockeye, coho and pink salmon in the Cusacum River drainage, reference 5AAC01286. Next, can the can a portion of stock be harvested consistent with sustained yield? Yes. Next question was, what amount is reasonable necessary for subsistence use? In January of 2013, the board revised the salmon amount necessary ANS findings in the Cusacum Bay District 4 and 5 as follows, 6,900 to 17,000 salmon, reference to the regulation. The board has not made an ANS finding on non-salmon species in the Cusacum area. Next criteria does uh, do the regulations provide a reasonable opportunity for subsistence use 
Um, my conclusion is yes, I believe the Lord would be uh, joining me with that. And then the last criteria, is it necessary to reduce or eliminate other uses to provide a reasonable opportunity for assistance use? I do not believe that to be the case. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would call a question. Thank you. Um, I would just um, maybe put on the record that with respect to six, um, it, uh, yeah, I would agree with you. Yeah. Um, okay. The question has been called. Errors and omissions. Director Raybong. No, Madam Chair. Mr. Peterson. No, Madam Chair. Captain Frenzel. No, Madam Chair. And I'm going to go back for Lisa Olson too, please. The errors and omissions from subsistence. No, Madam Chair. Director Nelson, will you please call the roll? Final action on proposal 173. Carpenter. Yes. Zare. Yes. Carlson Van Dorp. I'm sorry, Carlson Van Dorp. Yes. yes. Sorry. Yeah. Mitchell. Yes. Wood. No. Motion carries four in favor, one against, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Director Nelson, is there any miscellaneous business that the board needs to attend to? Uh, Madam Chair, I have none. Commissioner. So, Madam Chair, do we send the bill for this meeting to the new vice chair? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> No, I think this, I, I want to just conclude by saying this was our fault. The proposal got lost. I think it was right for the board to take this up and, and consider it because it was our fault. So we'll make sure that doesn't happen again. Thanks, Commissioner. Mr. Wood. Just an observation, Madam Chair. If this is how Zoom works for one of these kind of meetings, you will never see me vote in favor of going with Zoom unless absolutely required to. I concur. <laughs> Um, any other uh, board comments or uh, or discussion before we adjourn? All right. I don't see any additional RCs that have come in as the board was deliberating. So I um, just kind of wanted to make that noted for the record. Mr. Wood. Just one last item, Madam Chairman. I'm hoping uh, uh, Member Jensen's recovering from a surgery well, but knowing John, he's probably listening in just out of curiosity. And I just want to thank him for all the years of service that he provided to this board. It was uh, quite valued, and I'm uh, going to miss his presence here. But I'll give him a call whenever I feel it's appropriate and necessary. Thank you, John, and that's all I have. Thank you, John. Um, uh, yes, absolutely. And um, we certainly send our well wishes to Member Jensen. And um, I certainly am going to miss his presence on the board, um, at least for the next three years. We'll see. Um, uh, one other thing that I just wanted to know before we uh, before we uh, adjourn is that um, the commissioner and I had some discussion um, based off of a mis miscellaneous ag agenda item I think that we took up as statewide about um, perhaps convening the board process committee in the relatively near future to discuss um, you know process and timing associated with. Uh, with particularly stocks of concern designations and action plan drafts. Um, so uh, I just kind of wanted to put that on the record. I'll probably be reaching out to the chair of that committee. I think that's you, Mr. Wood, um, and and looking for um, some times where we we can consider a meeting um, or convening that committee just to have some some initial discussions about how we might might tackle that a little bit better. Because I'm anticipating additional stocks of concern and additional issues related to timing of action plans. Um, you know, coming up at some time in the near future. Uh, so perhaps, uh, you know, stay tuned uh, for more in that space. Gee, thanks, Madam Chair. You are welcome. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else today? Hmm. All right. Well, I think that that's a wrap, folks. And, um, and we'll see. Uh, Tom and Mr. Zaray and Mr. Wood back in the fall and best wishes to member Mitchell, uh, member Jensen, and member Heimbach. Thank you all for being with us today. Uh, with that, 
and the meeting is adjourned at 5 41 p.m thank you everyone thank you bye thank you everybody have a great summer you too everybody <laughs>